Hi everyone, I'm Kev and I'm in the middle of a boat restoration and I thought it would be a good time to show everyone how do you use a battery monitoring system with your electric trolley motor. Before we get started, just want to say this is not sponsored content. I'm just happening to be trialing the King's brand. If it's good, I'll keep it. If it's bad, I'll get rid of it. It is on the lower end of the scale of stuff, but it has been getting some pretty good reviews online. So what we've got here is a King's shunt style battery monitor, and we've got two King's 60 amp hour lithium batteries. Okay, so first, what do we get inside of the battery monitoring kit by a King's? I have already had this one open just to make sure everything was there. But, I'll give you a bit of an unboxing, since people like it. Voila, not too much. You get an instructional manual. You get the monitoring system, a little LCD screen, nothing too fancy. You get the shunt itself. And just so you know, these shunts aren't anything special. You can just buy your own shunts and mix and match your own little screens. We get some styrofoam and a couple cables. Now, one thing that I did notice is inside of this kit is it doesn't provide you with the power required to power this up. And uh, I thought that was a little bit funny. If you read inside of the instructional manual, we don't need to know much about anything in this video, but this image right here, what I will do is I'll take a photo of this and put it up in the corner of the screen so you can follow along. I was mentioning that there was something missing and it's the power cable. So it actually says that you need a power with a one amp inline fuse. So I've gone with a glass inline fuse here, the three gauge style. And we will be using this in addition to these here to get this set up. Okie doke, so to get this done, I've got two batteries and one trolley motor. So these batteries need to be in what's called series because I've got a 24 volt trolley motor and 12 volt batteries. So to put them in series, we'll turn them sideways because we need to connect the positive to the negative on one back side, and then these then become our power positive and our power negative. And to do that, I've made myself a handy dandy little connector. So now that we've got a 24 volt battery system here, let's take a look at how it looks like when we just have the trolley motor connected to these. What we've got here is coming from the trolley motor is we've got the negative and we've got the positive. In here, this is an inline fuse, 50 amp hour, and it's got a built-in switch. So you can see a tiny little button in there. If this fuse ever pops, that button there will pop out. So it's reusable. So if you're pulling too many amps, if something goes wrong, it'll pop and it'll allow you to figure out what's going on and hopefully save your trolley motor from blowing up. In a standard configuration, you would have your positive on your positive and your negative on your negative. And now the trolley motor has got power. She's on, she's trying to do some stuff. We won't let it have any more power. But what we would like to do is we'd like to monitor how much power that trolley motor is using so then we have an idea of how much battery life we've got left. So how long can we stay out in the water and keep using that trolley motor for? Let's get the shunt hooked up. First thing with the shunt is you need to see is we have some symbols in here. So you have P negative and B negative. So P negative is power negative and B negative goes towards your battery source. First, what you're going to need is you're going to need a single cable to connect from your battery to the shunt. Might get a little bit messy here, but just bear with me, we'll take it step by step. So we basically have your short cable coming from the battery negative shunt terminal up to the negative on your battery. But before I do that, there's a couple other little things that we need to do. A part of your monitoring system is this. It's a temperature monitor. And the way that you monitor temperature on the battery, the best source is on the negative terminal. So this needs to connect directly to the negative terminal of your battery along with the cable that you're connecting the shunt to. I like to put the, the shunt cable on the bottom so it has a better connection to the battery ring itself. And I'll just zip those in there. Get them in there nice and quick. All right, so that's down there nice and tight. Let's connect this one. For the instruction, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'll talk it down by hand. But when I do put it in the boat, I will use a tool to talk that up nice and tight so it doesn't come free. So next up is to get your positive sorted out. We spoke before about having a positive connector to actually give power to your battery monitoring system. That needs to go from your battery and it needs to connect into one of these little tiny holes down in here. So I'm just gonna push down on the orange and feed that in. 
and let go of the orange. And sometimes it helps to pull that orange bit back up to really give that a good connection. So that's in there nice and tight. So the next thing that we want to do is get that onto the positive terminal, along with what I said before, the positive to go to your trolley motor. But I want to pause here for a second because when I put these batteries into my boat, I don't really want to be taking them in and out, in and out when they're at home in the shed and I want to charge them. So what you can do here is if you have a quick connect for your battery charger, which I have right here, is you can take the positive of your battery charger and put that in the stack. So let's put the whole three of them there. So we've got the power to the trolley motor, we've got the power wire for the battery monitor, and we've got the positive from the battery charger. And just be careful if you're like me and you have these negative and positive terminals close to each other. And you're gonna store these in your boat really close like this. Don't stress too much. As long as you don't have any metal touching these and bridging these connections, you'll be completely fine. So up next, we're going to connect the negative from your trolley motor and the negative from your battery charging system. And we're gonna stick them on this side of the shunt. And we've just heard the trolley motor turn back on because it's now got power flowing through it. So we don't lose that power on and off. We'll make snug that down, hand torque it in. So that's the power side of everything connected. Now we just want to connect up the actual battery monitor itself. On the back, we have a couple little plugs. Okay, so now we've got the last step is to plug in the battery monitor. I have in my hand is the Celsius or Fahrenheit temperature set sensor, and that connects to the negative terminal. We'll plug that into the back, into the temperature side. I've got it upside down. There we go. So that's just in there nice and snug. It just pushes in there. The next up is we have the data cable. So the data cable just connects into the shunt and then into the back of your battery monitor. It doesn't matter which way you plug these in because it's exactly the same on each side. And there you have it. Everything is set up and good to go. We'll peel this off. Okay, so up first is we have the voltage. That's how many volts your system is putting out. So with my batteries, I've got a 24 volt system, but it will read higher. These are lithium and they always read a little bit higher. So we've got 26.68 volts. If I hit next, it'll come across to the amps. Now it's reading a zero because I've got no amp drawage coming from it. It might flicker a little bit if I get a GPS lock, but other than that, it'll be so low you won't even see it. But let me just turn on the trolley motor for a second and we'll start turning the head. So we won't, we won't do anything else but turn that head. And you can see that it is getting almost 0.5 amps. The next screen is the watts, and that's your power draw. It'll be sitting at zero because we're not currently getting any watts. But if I do the same thing and turn the head, you'll see that go up a bit. In fact, it was actually written 5.3, and that's probably the GPS functioning on the trolley motor. The next up is the amp hours. Now that's the capacity of your battery. Now, like I said before, I did have this out just to make sure everything was working before making the video. So I have set this battery monitor at 60 amps. When you get these, you have to set the capacity of your batteries on this so it knows how many amps you have in total. There is your degrees. This is in Celsius. So the negative terminal of my battery is 21 degrees Celsius. And then here we have the hours. It's currently reading at about 240 hours. Now that's because we're not doing anything with the power draw. Now, if I'm trolling along with this electric trolley motor and I'm pulling five amps, then it will do a calculation to do with how many amps you've got left spare and how many amps you are currently drawing and it will tell you how many hours you have left at that current draw rate. So to break it down, these are 60, this is a 60 amp hour setup. And if I'm using 60 amps draw, that will only last for one hour because it's a 60 amp hour setup. If I'm using 30 amps, I will get two hours of draw. But with these trolley motors, these are the 24 volt systems. They use a lot less than the 12 volt trolley motors. So at low speeds, even at around 30% usage, they'll still only be sitting around six amp drawers. So you can usually get about a good 10 hours out on the water with this system with 60 amp hours. And the last but not least is the percentage. You can just clearly see how much battery power do you have left? And it's just sitting there as a percentage. The other thing that this battery monitor can do, and most of them will do it as well, is you can have an overvolt or an undervolt setting. Okay, I'm just gonna get it into the voltage setting. So what I've done is I was on the voltage screen and I held set, and I've set this to 28 volts. So I can say, okay, if these batteries get to 28 volts, which is about one and a half voltage higher than normal, 
this will throw an error and say, hey, you've got too many volts going on in your system. Next you have amp and you can do the same thing. So you can set an amp alert. So if I press and hold the set button there, see if we can get this to work. It goes into the amp setting drawer. So it will throw an error if it goes over 50 amps. That's what I have set there. I hope you can see that on the screen. Basically, this trolley motor needs a 50 amp fuse. So I figured I'll set this to 50 amps and that will throw a warning to say that I'm using too many amps and that fuse is about to pop. And the last monitor alert that you can do is on your degrees. So if I press and hold again, same thing. I've got it set at 55 degrees. Now I really don't know if that's too low, but I've thought that would be a safe start. So I'm gonna leave it at 55 degrees. So if the battery terminal gets to 55 degrees, it's gonna throw an error. And when that happens, I should shut the system down because there's clearly something wrong with the system. You shouldn't be getting to that sort of degrees. Before I end the video, just wanna let everybody know that this is a fishing channel. So if you enjoy fishing, go check out some of the other content that I have. And if you like it, hit that subscribe button. That's how you set up a battery monitoring system for your trolley motor. And you could do the same thing for your caravan or any other electrical system that you have. That's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video on how to set up a battery monitoring system. I'll see you on the next one. Happy adventures.